Adobe After Effects is a very powerful piece of software. It's the industry standard application for the design and production of motion graphics. It's also a fairly daunting program that requires a great deal of skill to master. But what if you have a requirement for repetitive or extremely fast creative throughput? Is it possible to automate the creative process in After Effects? In this short tutorial, I'm going to show you two approaches to using scripting in After Effects that radically simplifies the way that motion graphics are produced. It's possible to rapidly set up an AE project with visual, audible, and textual assets without knowing a thing about After Effects. All the user needs to do is start up the application and open a window. The rest of the process is completely automated via a custom user interface. For the purposes of this demonstration, we'll take a look at a project that was designed for digital signage distribution, but the strategies used here can be applied to any After Effects project. Here's what the finished render looks like. Now, let's take a look at the project in After Effects. If you're familiar with AE, you'll note that there is very little to see here, and this is because we won't be using the After Effects interface window at all to set up and render this project. To get started, we simply go up to Window, Automation Script. And you can see that another window opens up uh, with the custom UI that is going to allow us to ingest all of the assets that we want to use in this project. So I'm going to go over to Select Image and click the button and the Image Import dialog box opens up. I'm going to select this image here, which is a picture of a camera, and hit OK. And now I'm going to enter the product name. In this case it's a Nikon D60. The product price, I don't know, I'll make it up. Let's say it's $699.99. And optionally you can put in a description as well. This is a Nikon camera. Uh, we can do a sale badge uh, to check on or off. This is the sale badge right up here. In this case, let's use that and we will put a little message in there saying that it's a sale. We'll leave the background image on and hit the preview button. When I do that, you can see that it immediately shows up with all of the assets that we had entered. There's the camera, there's the sale badge, price, main description text, and the secondary description text. Now, what's important to note here is that this project is resolution independent to any asset that you can import. The project itself is going to automatically size any image that you bring in, no matter how big it is, no matter how small it is, so that it'll always fit consistently within the same area of the project. It'll automatically resize anything that you bring in. Same thing goes with the text as well. No matter how much text you enter, it's always going to size itself to fit within the context of the project. So for instance, if I wanted to add a bunch more text to the description, you can see that when I do that, it'll still automatically make sure that it fits within the context of the project. Everything is automatic. Everything works just so. So let's go ahead and import our second image. Select image. In this case, I'm actually going to use a video clip. Now, the interesting thing about using video clips is that, in this case, the project is going to just use the first six or so seconds of the video clip uh, in the project, but it would be possible within the scripting confines to make the duration of the animation set automatically, depending on the duration of the source video file that you use. So that's pretty powerful if you would like your animation duration to fit exactly to any video asset that you might import. And we'll hit the OK button here. And again, we will put in some products. So this is a Canon lens. Product price will be, hmm, let's make this a nice inexpensive Canon lens, $56.99. And here is the description. Sale badge we will leave on. And we'll do now. Show background image is checked and hit the preview button. Now you can see why we have the show background image option in this particular project. This is shot on white and it's sort of the box doesn't look quite so nice when it's got the background image there. So in this case, I'm going to turn it off. So let's go ahead and import the third product now. Now, of course, you don't have to use three products in this particular project if you don't want. You can just uncheck the third and uncheck the second. It'll only use the first, and it'll still always automatically loop from one to the other to the other. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to use all three, so I'll leave those checked. Select image. We'll put an iPad in there. 
product name, iPad, product price. Well, this will probably be somewhere up around there. Description, this is an iPad. Sale badge, of course, will turn off because iPads are never on sale. And we'll leave show background image on. Hit the preview button. And again, it'll probably look better if we turn the background image off. Turn that off. So at this point, we have all of the products entered. We've reviewed them by clicking on the preview buttons and we're happy with how it's all set up. Now we're going to go over to the setup options over here on the right hand side. So the first thing we'll do is select the colors that we want. The main color right here, color number one is used in the main text and the secondary color is used in the secondary text area. Let's change the secondary color. We'll click on red and the dialog box will open up to allow us to choose whatever color we would like. In this case, let's change it to a little bit of a blue and you'll see that it'll automatically update there. Now, you're not limited to just using colors as well, of course. You can use grayscale too. You can enter your text using RGB numbers, HSL numbers, or hex numbers so that you can match corporate branding exactly. We hit OK there. We have a nice little gray there now. Now, moving down to the rest of the render settings, this project was designed at 1920 by 1080, but we can size it to whatever size that we want. Let's say that we've got a very long, skinny display, 1920 by 600 pixels. And if we hit preview, you'll see that it'll automatically size the content to fit the screen that we've got right here. Everything's automated. Now the next thing that we take a look at is frames per second. If you don't want your display to play back at 29.97, you can select whatever frame rate you'd like here. Going down to the render settings, this is the render settings that you would find in the After Effects render queue. In this case, we'll select current settings. Then we go to the output module. Again, this is the same output modules that we'll find in the After Effects render queue. We'll leave it at H.264, 2 megabits per second. And then we go to the save dialog box. We open that up, we'll go into Renders, and we'll save this as Movie 2, and we're ready to go. Now, we haven't taken a look at the Render Queue yet, because we're not going to take a look at the Render Queue. We've got everything set up exactly as we want, and now all we have to do is hit the Render button. When we do that, you can see that it's going to render the project out uh, using the settings that we had specified in the Render Settings area. So, we've seen how a scripted user interface in After Effects can simplify the ingestion of assets into an AE project. Now we'll take a look at a different approach, using a spreadsheet generated in Microsoft Excel to define project assets. For this demonstration, I'll be using a tab-delimited text file as the source, but any consistent data stream will do. First, let's take a look at the spreadsheet. You can see that we've got all of the options in the spreadsheet that we had in the script. We've got whether we would like the product turned on or off, the image source, the product name, product price, product description, whether we'd like the sale badge on or off and what that text will be, and whether we'd like the image to be ghosted in the background. And we've got that for all three products. Down at the bottom, we've got the option to set our project settings, including color, frame size, frames per second, quality of the render, the output module, and where we would like the render saved. So, once you've got the Excel project file set up, you would go to File, Save As, and choose Text Tab Delimited as your option. Hit the Save button, hit OK because it's asking you all these questions that you have to agree with, and yes, I would like to save this as Tab Delimited. Now, we're going to go up to After Effects. And same thing as we did in the other project, we're going to go up to Window, Automation Script.jsx. And if we take a look in the bottom right hand corner, you can see that there's a button that says Load Assets from File. I'm going to click on that button, and I'm going to go into our Spreadsheet folder, select the Spreadsheet.txt that we had generated, this is the tab delimited file, and hit the OK button. When I do that, you can see that everything in the project will automatically get loaded in from the tab delimited file, including product names, where sources are, everything all the way down to where we're going to be saving the project file. So at this point, having entered all of the information automatically, all we have to do is click the render button to produce the project. And there we have two different methods to quickly and accurately modify After Effects projects with image and text assets.
In conclusion, there are very few limitations to scripting in Adobe After Effects. The project that we used in this demonstration only hints at the elements, both creative and technical, that can be automated in After Effects. In short, if you can imagine it, it's likely that it can be scripted and automated. Thank you for taking the time to view this demonstration.